Live from the 412, it's Platt's Point of View, y'all. Let's go. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Platt, and this is the 2021 NFL Draft Preview Show. I got rankings, position rankings, sleepers, draft gems, and some HBCU prospects. Y'all better quit sleeping on HBCUs. The 2021 NFL Draft will be the 86th annual and will be held in Cleveland, Ohio from April 29th to May 1st. The Jacksonville Jaguars are on the clock and they have the first overall selection and they'll probably take quarterback Trevor Lawrence. The 2021 NFL Draft, I love it. The 2021 quarterback class has a bunch of interesting options. Teams looking for a starting quarterback will have to figure out if they want a dual threat quarterback or classic traditional pocket passer. So let's start with these quarterbacks, man. My favorite guy on this list, I love me some Justin Fields. 6'3", 225, 4'4", speed, big arm, athletic passer. He can make all the throws, nice deep ball accuracy, 61% on throws over 20 yards. He's elusive, he's a legit running threat, he's tough as nails, and he never lost a Big Ten game. Justin Fields is gonna be a star, mark my words. Also, man, I like Zach Wilson out of BYU, man. About 6'2", 210, four fast speed. He's a smart, instinctive quarterback with ridiculous arm talent. He's dangerous as a runner. He throws his right receivers open. He's a competitor. Some scouts, though, they question his competition at BYU. They said they had a soft schedule this past season. I kind of beg to differ because I think if you're good, you're just good. I like him, too. Your man looks like Jim McMahon out there. But I think he's going to be way better, and hopefully he can get a Super Bowl, Bowl and we'll see. My favorite though out of this class, Trey Lance, North Dakota State, 6'3", 225, 4'5", speed. He's a very athletic quarterback with great physical skills. He throws a catchable ball. He senses the pass rush. He has excellent instincts. He's a good running threat. People don't think he got it. They're wondering who he played against because he comes from North Dakota State. Don't sleep. You got Steve McNair, Tony Romo, Jeff Blake, uh, Jake DeLome, a host of others that, that didn't play out good – high-profile major universities, and they had solid, productive NFL careers. So don't sleep, man. Trey Lance, he's going to be good. Sleeper pick, Jamie Newman out of Wake Forest. 6'3", quarterback, about 230, 4'6", speed. He's a good athletic quarterback with nice arm talent. He's very accurate on deep throws. He opted out of the 2020 season after transferring to Georgia. I like Newman a lot, man. And I think with the right development, he could be a good quality quarterback. Let's go to the running backs. This year's running back class has a number of quality players with starting running back potential. It's a lot of death out running back in this year's class. Some teams, they'll probably wait till day two or three to get a draft jump at running back. My favorite on this list, Javante Williams out of North Carolina. 5'10", 220 pounds, four fast speed. He's a bruiser. Physical, well-rounded running back with good vision. He's a bruiser, like I said. He runs with power. He gets a lot of yards after contact. I also like, I hope the Steelers get this guy if he's on the board. Trey Sermon, the Oklahoma transfer, transfer to Ohio State, 6 feet, 215, 4 fast speed. He's a strong, powerful running back with good short area quickness. He's versatile. He's a real good inside runner. He's a solid blocker. I'm a big Trey Sermon fan. A team is getting a quality running back with him. Sleeper guy, you got Raheem Boyd out of Arkansas. I talked about him last show. He's a slashing one-cut runner, good athlete, good inside, outside running back. He's former last chance U star. I really like Raheem Boyd. I think he's going to shock some people. So we're going to go next up to the uh, wide receivers. The 2021 wide receiver class has a bunch of polished wide receivers with big play ability and good route runners. My favorite guy on this list, Jamar Chase out of LSU. Six feet, 200 pounds, 4'3 speed. He's a smooth, explosive wide receiver. He opted out of the 2020 season. The year before, though, he had 20 touchdowns with Joe Burrow throwing him lasers. He's got sticky hands. He's a big-time playmaker. He can take slams to the house. I think he's going to be better than just Justin Jefferson, his former teammate. I think Jamar Chase is going to be a star. Another guy I like. Kadarius Toney out of Florida, 5'11", 194, 4 speed. <clears throat> He's the perfect slot receiver for the NFL. 
He has very good open field vision. He has basketball type moves on a football field. He's elusive. He's a good returner. He's very electric. Percy Harvin 2.0. Tony is a beast. Another guy, another sleeper, Rondell Moore out of Purdue. 5'9", 185. He just recently clocked at a 4-2-9 speed at Purdue's Pro Day. He's one of the most explosive playmakers in the country last season. Very strong. This wide receiver squats 600 pounds. Whoa. He has insane athletic ability. He can return punts and kicks too. He'll be a special teams beast. Rondell Moore. Another guy, HBCU prospect, man. Donnie Curley out of Texas Southern. He's 6'2", 200 pounds, 4'3", speed. Donnie Curley began his career at Michigan State as a four-star recruit out of the state of Michigan. He was one of the best freshman wide receivers in the Big Ten in the 2016 season. But Corley got in some trouble. He was dismissed from Michigan State. You know, he was accused of a sexual assault charge, and he had to go to junior college before signing with Texas Southern. Corley is probably the only wide receiver in the SWAC to average 100 yards per game this past season. Corley is a playmaker that is a threat to score every time he touches the ball. He creates separation, runs his routes very well, and Corley is very explosive. He should grow and mature into a nice quality NFL player. I like him a lot, man. Some team's going to be happy. Let's go to the tight ends now. The tight end position creates mismatches on the field. This year's tight end class has a lot of big body playmakers. My favorite, and he's probably the top player in the draft besides Michael Parsons, Cal Pitts out of Florida. 6'5", tight end, 240 pounds, 4'4", speed. He's a super speedy tight end with crazy athletic ability. He's a matchup nightmare. He's too fast for linebackers, too big for DBs. I think he's the new Shannon Sharp. He reminds me of Shannon Sharp a lot. A sleeper guy, you got Kyle Granson out of SMU. He's a 6'3", 240-pound tight end, undersized tight end. He got some serious skills. Keep an eye on him, too. Let's go to the linemen, guards and tackles. The offensive tackle and guard group has a bunch of quality prospects who can play all over the offensive line. My favorite, and he's probably going to be the best one, tackle Penny Sewell out of Oregon. 6'6", 331 pounds. He opted out this past season. He's a pure athletic tackle, the total package. He plays with a nasty demeanor. He's a pancake artist. He's a complete tackle. I see a lot of Pro Bowls and pro, all pro selection in his future. Another guy, you got a versatile lineman, guard center, David Moore out of Grambling, HBCU, 6'1", 320 pounds. He's a big, wide body lineman. He's a solid blocker. He has good strength at the point of attack. He's probably the best small school lineman prospect. He gets to the second level when he pancakes opponents, and he was pretty good at the senior bowl. Let's go to the centers now. Another guy I like for centers, looking at this list, man, I like Josh Myers out of Ohio State. 312 pounds, 6'3". He's a steady pass protector with good size and length. He's very tough and aggressive. So if you need a center, don't forget about him. Another sleeper, I keep talking about this guy, Jimmy Morrissey from Pitt. 6'3", 305 pounds. He's a former walk-on. He gave up zero sacks in the 2019 season. He's improved every year. He's a very good run blocker, and he's solid in pass protection. Jimmy Morrissey, man, I'm telling you. Next up, I got some draft gems for y'all. Draft gems. Ooh. So for the draft gems, man, you got a Memphis, man. They've been developing some running backs from D'Angelo Wim to Tony Pollard to Antonio Gibson and now Kenneth Gainwell. 5'9", I mean 5'11", pardon me, 197 pounds, 4'4 speed. He's a super talented running back. Some scouts say he's a poor man's Reggie Bush. He has a nice burst through the hole to turn a corner and outrun opponents. Gainwell was the first FBS player since 1997 to record 200 receiving yards and 100 rushing yards in the same game. Memphis featured him as a runner and a receiver. His pass catching skills should be a big part of his role in the NFL. I like him a lot. He's very versatile. Another guy, defensive tackle, Jalen Twyman out of Pitt. 6'2", 305 pounds. He opted out of the 2020 season. But I've seen him play a couple times. He's very quick off the ball. He's a very athletic defensive lineman. Twyman is very disruptive. He had 12 tackles and 12 tackles for loss and 10 sacks the previous season. 
Somebody's getting a steal, man. This guy's very disruptive. Another draft gem, cornerback Robert Rochelle out of Central Arkansas. 5'11", 194, 4'3", speed, 43 inch vertical. Man, he can jump. Physical cornerback, he was an FCS standout. He finished his career with 10 enters, 38 passes defended. He's a good quality man cover corner. Next up, we got a, we're going to switch gears to the defense. Defensive tackles. There aren't too many dominant defensive linemen in this year's draft, but there's a bunch of quality, talented players. There's no Warren Sapp, Javon Kinlaw, or Derrick Brown. But there's a lot of diamonds in the rough, though. One of the guys I'm watching, he's a sleeper, Milton Williams out of Louisiana Tech. 6'3", 285 pounds, 4'6", speed for a D lineman. That's remarkable. Very quick and powerful with good leverage. He uses his hands well. He's super athletic. He's a former high school basketball player. As far as the defensive ends, <clears throat> excuse me, there isn't a dominant pass rusher in this year's draft, but there's a lot of risk-reward prospects. If they land on the right team, a lot of these guys can become double-digit sack artists. I like Jalen Phillips out of Miami. 6'5", 266 pounds, 4'7", speed. Former NFL scout and current ESPN football analyst Lewis Riddick said Phillips is the best pure pass rusher in this year's draft. He's a good run defender. He's very athletic. People sleeping on him. Another guy I like. Got to see him in person too playing. Man, he's, he's big. He's a big guy. Greg Rosu. Gregory Rosu. 6'6", 255 pounds out of Miami. 4'7", speed. He has an excellent skill set. He dominated in 2019. 15 and a half sacks. I saw him up close against Pitt at Hines Field in 2019. He had three sacks, and he looked unblockable at times. So, yes, he has a little bit of raw ability, but he's coming, man. He should be another pass rushing specialist. So far as linebackers, you got outside and inside. Man, there's a bunch of versatile linebackers with speed, instincts, and playmaking skills. There a lot of these guys can play outside and inside linebacker. But I think Michael Parsons is going to be a star. I think he's a star in the making. He's a freak athlete. <clears throat> he has crazy athleticism. He's a good run defender. He ran a 4-3 at Penn State's Pro Day. And I think they need to unleash him as an outside linebacker, as a pass rusher. You get that 4-3 speed on the edge, and man, I see a lot of sacks. Michael Parsons is going to be a star. For his inside, I like Nick Bolton out of Missouri. Man, he's a hitter. 6 feet, 233 pounds, 4-6 speed. He's a cold-blooded thumper. <clears throat> Excuse me. He hits like a train. He's a pure three down inside linebacker with good cover skills. <clears throat> I really like him a lot. Another guy, Chad Surrett, North Carolina, 6'1, 230, 46 speed. He's a former starting quarterback for the Tar Heels, and then he moved to inside linebacker. He played outside too. He's very underrated. He's very consistent. He's a good playmaking linebacker, and he always seems to be in the right position. I think Surrett. Is going to be an effective three-down linebacker. I like him a lot. Don't be surprised. You hear he's a household name in years to come. Cornerbacks. This year's cornerback class has a lot of long, athletic, versatile corners. A lot of day one starters. Patrick Sertain, he's probably the best one of the bunch. A straight shutdown quarter, corner with a ton of ability. But the guy that I like is Kaleeb Farley out of Virginia Tech. 6'2", 205 pounds, 4'4", speed. He has the size to match up with bigger receivers. He has great awareness and ball skills. He's a good tackler. He has nice closing speed. He opted out this past season. Another guy, Asante Samuel Jr. Yeah, that's his son. That's his son, the former shutdown corner from Florida State. He's about 5'10", 187, 4'4", speed. <coughs> Excuse me. He's a physical corner who excels in man or zone coverage he has a knack for the ball and he held his own against every receiver he matched up against he's climbing up the draft boards and i'm hearing that the pittsburgh Steelers really like him a lot we'll see safeties <clears throat> pardon me a safety with cover skills who can also be a good run stopper can be hard to find this upcoming draft has solid free and strong safety options my favorite Javon Howland out of Oregon. 6'1", 207 pounds, 4'4", speed. He's another opt-out this past season. He's a versatile safety with impressive ball skills. 
He has good route recognition and anticipation. He's a willing tackler. He's a good athlete. And he has punt experience, too. He's going to be pretty good. Also, you got uh, Caden Stearns out of Texas. 6'1", 200 pounds, 4'4", speed. Physical, aggressive, safety with nice speed. He's improved as an open field tackler. I like him a lot, too. Next up, I got some HBCU prospects. Don't ever sleep on an HBCU player. Jerry Rice, Doug Williams, Walter Payton, Shannon Sharp, Michael Strahan, most recently, Javon Hargrave, Darius Leonard, probably the best middle linebacker. Hall of Fame scout, the late, great Bill Nunn, helped the Steelers win four Super Bowls with some HBCU players like Ernie Holmes, Mel Blunt, John Starworth, and etc. So first off, you got a cornerback, Franklin Mack McCain, the third, out of North Carolina A&T. He's six feet, 175 pounds. He's a 4-3 speed guy. Scouts say he's the best cornerback to come out of an HBCU since Dominic Rogers Cromartie. McCain is a polished cornerback with size and skills. He's a natural ball hawk. He usually shadows the other team's best wide receiver, and he does it pretty well, rarely getting called for pass interference. He has four interceptions returned for touchdowns in his career, and he's a certified cover corner. Somebody's getting another star. Somebody's getting a gem. Another guy running back, Jai Maine Morton out of North Carolina A&T. 5'10", 215 pounds, 4 fast speed. He's a pure runner with a burst and natural lateral ability. He had 23 touchdowns last season, which he had broke the record, the school record held by Tariq Cohen. He ran for over 1,400 yards this past season. No, he's not Tariq Cohen, but I think he can be a good change of pace back for a team in the NFL, man. He might be a starter. I like Jermaine Martin a lot. Like I said, don't sleep the HBCUs. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy Plot's Point of View, the NFL Draft Preview Show. We'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good day. Out. Sit on the